Hey everybody, Mark Agnesi here in the back room of Norman's Rare Guitars. Welcome back to another episode of Guitar of the Day. Woo! <laughs> Gretsch Duo Jet from yesterday. Bye bye. Bye bye. It's two in a row. <laughs> you're keeping track. I know you're all keeping track. It's two in a row. Plus the Rick Bass from last Thursday and the Strat from last Saturday. That's what. Four out of six. Not bad. I mean, could be better, but four out of six ain't bad. Oh, let's see. Uh, I had a, a cool thing. My my buddy Tyler Bryant from the band Tyler Bryant and the Shakedown uh, had a guitar stolen from him about five and a half years ago. It was a custom shop pink relic Strat, totally bitching, called it Pinky. Him and uh, the other guitar player in the band, uh, Graham Whitford, both had guitars stolen uh, yesterday. There was a, a store in uh, Spokane, Washington. The guitar surfaced and they called him right away, verified it was his, and they sent it back to him. He got his guitar back yesterday after five and a half years uh, of not having it, which is really, really cool. It's fun to go back. If you're on Instagram, go to Tyler Bryant's page, check out the video of him getting it back and unboxing and stuff. It was pretty cool. And also check out Tyler Bryant and the Shakedown if you haven't heard him yet, because they're like killer rock band. Absolutely fantastic. Um, let's see what we got here. Oh no, what did I do, Jen? Uh, let's see, uh, happy 14th birthday to Mikey Lusos. I think we're a day late on that, but happy birthday, homie. Thank you for watching. I had one here too. A brother uh, wanted to send a happy birthday wish. Uh, Russell Crown, hey, my brother, Sean Crown, it's his birthday tomorrow, Flat Top Friday. Uh, he has cancer and watches all the videos. Uh, of the store while he's at the hospital. Well, that sucks, but happy birthday, man. Everybody send some good vibes uh, over there to Sean Crown. See if we get home uh, home and feeling better. Uh, that takes care of the formalities for today. <laughs> it's... it's Flat Top Friday. <laughs> Come on back, check this out, it's so rad. It's from 1963. Yeah. Original Gibson Hummingbird. Here it's Cherry Sunburst Finish. It's like wow it's like every rolling stone song you ever heard all at once it's so pretty it's really classic man yeah it's something about that cherry sunburst finish and the way it fades over time just like the burst man it's exactly the same they all kind of get their own fade and patina on them some of them stay real tomato soupy red some of them if they sat in like a store window or something they got a lot of uv coming in just like on the burst man the red starts to fade and they go to this kind of honey color that's sick um so let's talk hummingbirds 61 is the first official year of the hummingbird although they did release some in 60 we call them r birds um because they still have A serial numbers, but they'll be stamped with the factory order number R, which is for 1960. Once you get into 1961 is when you'll start to see the impressed serial numbers on the back of the headstock, but you guys already knew that. <laughs> so yeah, the R birds, they exist, 1960. But 61 is really the first full year. Really nothing changes on this guitar until you get till 1965, other than the neck shape. You know, the 61 obviously is gonna be the real blady neck, the ones and twos. Once you get into the three, this starts to get a little bit more uh, roundness to it. 64, again, you kind of get those nice big necks. 65 is that transition year where the nut width gets a little bit small, you lose an eighth of an inch. This is still the nice wide one and 11 sixteenths nut width. Um, mm -hmm. 63 also has the plastic bridge. I'm not referring to the saddle, I'm referring to the bridge itself, which is plastic. Um, they did this in 63 and early 64. Um, with that comes some issues like this one you'll see has got this tiny little crack right here. But I mean, you can't really repair it or fix it. What's great is that it's nice and flat and flush. It sounds so damn good. We don't want to do anything to it. So it's just, yeah, it's got a little crack there. Like I can deal with it. You deal with it? Mm -hmm. I can deal with it. Um, so this is really Gibson's first jump into um, the square shoulder dreadnoughts. We were talking about this uh, was that last, or two weeks ago when we were doing that Southern Jumbo. It was a 61 SJ that was still slope shouldered. 62, they went to square. This is really the first guitar they did with the square shoulder, which is more kind of like Martin's dreadnought shape. Up until then, everything had been the sloped kind of J45, J50 thing. Um, but really, it's the same woods as a J45 or J50. So we got the spruce top. We have mahogany back and sides. We have a little bit fancier binding. We have, you know, the, uh, what is it, seven ply. 
binding. White, black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white. <laughs> yeah. And then we have the pitching hummingbird pick guard, man, which really... So cool. So cool. And then, of course, the iconic Heritage Cherry Finish. Split parallelogram inlays. Pretty much the same feature set as a Southern Jumbo or uh, a Country and Western. Like, if you had this guitar and a Country and Western sitting right next to it, the only difference would be the birds on the pick guard and the color. That's it. Same woods, same binding package, same options. Similar guitars. But for whatever reason, the Hummingbird is just the iconic model. Why, Keith? Yeah, but a lot of other people, too. But Keith, if you think of the Rolling Stones acoustic songs, you know, all the Exile on Main Street, you think Wild Horses and Angie and all those songs. Adjustable Saddle, White Ceramic Insert, Gibson Hummingbird. That's all those records, man. Ugh, it's so classic. Uh, the other thing that's been done to this, it happened in the 70s a lot, someone opted for some Schaller tuners on this thing. So the tuners were changed. Once again, I can deal with that, man. When you hear how it sounds, all this is doing is just letting somebody get into this guitar for a little bit less money. Because if that uh, had different tuners on it, probably add about another 1500 bucks to the price for the collector guys. But really great condition overall. I mean, look at the checking on it. It's not like minty fresh, but it's like, that's, you know, that's the patina you want to see on an old Gibson guitar, man. It just gives it the character. Let you know that this thing's seen some time. There's some stories in this guitar. Why don't we go out to the couch? We'll tickle it with the fingers. We'll bang on it real hard with the flat pick because they <laughs> like to be banged on. Let me tell you. See how this uh, see how this hummingbird stacks up. They like to be tickled too. They like to be tickled. <laughs> All right, we're out front. We have the 1963 Gibson Hummingbird original Heritage Cherry Sunburst finish. Let's put it through the paces real quick. We'll start with the fingers uh, and we'll switch to a pick in just a minute here. Grab a flat pick. Let's do what this thing was intended to. Get banged on really, really hard. Let's see how it handles that here.
Sorry. That's like the sound of every record you love from the 1960s right there. From 1963, it's original Gibson Hummingbird. The iconic heritage cherry finish, spruce top mahogany back and sides, rosewood, fingerboard, split parallelogram, inlays. Change tuners on this one, but who cares when they sound like that, man. It's just making the guitar more affordable at this point. It's killer. There's your Flat Top Friday for this week. Follow me on Instagram at Mark Agnesi. Follow the store at Norman's Rare Guitars. And check this and the rest of these guitars out online while they last at normansrareguitars.com. We have one final guitar of the day for the week. Spoiler <laughs> alert. It's freaking Saturday. We'll see you tomorrow for one last episode. Peace. Bye. Oh, <laughs>